Hi everybody, this is Nancy from Fog and Fern and today I am going to take you on a mini plant tour of my home um, in the main living room. Uh, so yeah, I feel like I've wanted to do this for a while and it's a great day to do it. My children are asleep. <laughs> we'll see how long that lasts. Um, but all you moms out there, you all know and dads know that when your children go to sleep, that's the time that you need to do the things for yourself or even work. Well, anyway, so here we go. So over here, I don't know how many plants I have down here, by the way. I haven't counted. It changes. But... I'm going to start down in this little corner. This is probably my favorite corner of the house. Um, I have a few plants here. This is my south facing window. And so this means this corner gets a lot of light and my plants that live here better enjoy that light or they will be fried. And they have fried. <laughs> before in my journey to figure out which plants work well in such a hot and bright corner uh, because not only is this corner bright it gets really really hot in the summer so yeah that's been a that's been a learning process for me so what do I have here this first plant is I don't know if you can see it is a variegated string of hearts, chain of hearts. So it's a new plant for me. I've had other chain of hearts and they grow well for me in, in the house. Um, this plant really likes the bright light. Um, it's variegated, so it means it has uh, colors other than green. I don't know if it's focusing well but you'll see that there's pink in this plant. It's really nice. It's not a, it's an uncommon plant for us here in Newfoundland. Um, I expect that it'll get much more common uh, this year. Um, however, yeah, so it's, it's right there. It likes, it's a succulent type of plant. Uh, so what that means is you let that plant dry out good and dry before you water it. I'm a fan of letting you letting the plant go a little bit wrinkly. I'm touching it now. It does need to be watered, so I'll water that um, later today. But as you can see, I don't know if you can see, it's not the greatest setup here, but no, I don't think you can see it. It's a little wrinkly, so it does need to be watered. That just means the, that the moisture is out of the leaves. So succulents hold a lot of moisture in their in their leaves so you don't want to give them too much moisture because you will induce root rot and that's not good so this plant here maybe i'll move it a little bit so i can focus on it is my beautiful crown of thorns i'm a little sad about this plant because it once was a very full and lush looking plant. Um, it's grown a lot for me in the time that I've, sorry, <laughs> that I've got this plant. So I first got this plant um, in 2019, I think. Sounds about right. I think so, yeah. So anyway, um, and it was probably in a, um, I don't know, four inch pot. Now it's in an eight inch pot. So it's grown a lot for a succulent, for what, what's kind of like a cactus, crown of thorns. For, for a cactus or a succulent plant, that's a lot of growth um, to, to grow that much, to go up those, those pot sizes. So anyway, yeah, it's a beautiful plant. It's in the, uh, I believe in the Euphorbia family. So it, it be careful if you have plants or kids that, uh, plants or kids, animals or kids that experiment with plants or that you know are really curious because well first of all it's pokey right it's got thorns 
And second of all, the sap in this plant um, can be toxic, depending on how much is, if it is consumed. So you want to be careful. Uh, my kids thus far, well, one is not mobile, but the other one is really good about my plants. He, he doesn't bother them at all. I've taught him from an early age uh, to, to be curious about plants and like them, but not to touch mommy's plants. And that's saying something because he's two and a half. So it's a good age for, for being that way. And, oh, I think I did. Oh yes, so I had a visitor. <laughs> it was somebody who uh, came to pick up a plant, a couple of plants that they purchased off me yesterday when I had my uh, plant sale. So um, yeah, it's cool. I'll be seeing people over the next few days, hopefully. And um, so yeah, where was I? Crown of Thorns. So here it is, yes. And I'll just finish up with this plant. So it really, really, really likes the hot heat and the bright light. So it's one of the, old, the few plants that I have that can withstand this, um, the, this light exposure being to the close, so close to the window, that um, hot, hot, hot south light, super bright. Like who, know, who knew that in Newfoundland there could be a window where your plants would be scorched? Wild. Okay. So this guy, of course, like water whim, very dry. I might water this plant once every three weeks, sometimes once a month. I expect I'll be watering it a little bit more often um, in the time to come because we are having a very hot spring. It's a beautiful outdoors today. I'd say it's about 10, 12 degrees. Oh, I, 12 degrees, I'd say. Anyway, so, uh-oh, sneezing. <laughs> Bless me. Oh, I don't wake my kids up. Okay, so what do we have here? This is, <laughs> whoa, that's not close and personal for that plant. Uh, I'll just move it because I can, because it's small. Okay, so here is my string of pickles or ruby necklace. I actually, um, refer to it mostly as the ruby necklace. Uh, anyway, so it's just take a look at this. It's a succulent. I just moved this plant to this location here on my plant stand here uh, from, I'll show you, from this place. It, this plant was in this hurricane vase that my mom gave me. It is a beautiful piece of decor. It's from Party Light. When Party Light used to be the thing. Anyway, I absolutely love anything vintage looking, stained glass. It's very, it is uh, like a high-end decor piece. It's beautiful. And when the sun hits in the mid-afternoon, that vase just um, is beautiful. It like projects these little square lights it's just beautiful magical looking so we don't have that happening right now because i guess we don't have the right light but maybe when i do as i'm doing this video we will see it um the latest picture that i took of this vignette to this setup here um i posted it on my fog and fern facebook page um shows that actual lighting situation happening it's really pretty and it's so that picture is not touched up at all it's exactly like real it's so crazy anyway i'll get to this plant in a minute and so but i did change it because i've well i've had this plant there for a long time and i just like switching stuff up i'm always shifting my plants around i love to create like just little vignettes uh, of decor and yeah I just like a change every now and then so and this plant really needs a lot of bright light so um, it can totally be okay over here I'll have to watch it um, I hope the light's not gonna be too bright for it this summer but if that's the case I'll just move it again um, or move it during the hottest hours of the day so which would be around lunchtime till about two o'clock um, depending. 
So yeah, it's a succulent. Notice the purple uh, stems, really pretty, really pretty. When this plant gets enough light, and I don't know, maybe maturity, uh, it, it grows um, yellow blooms. I've never seen it, so maybe I'll get some with this plant here in this corner uh, this summer. So succulents, you know the drill. Succulents, you let them dry out um, really well before you water. My tip for this plant is, so you see these center uh, little leaves, if you could call them leaves. Right now they're firm. That's because I watered this plant recently. Maybe, I think it was last night I watered this plant. So what happens is when the plant, this plant tells me that it needs water, these center leaves will be squishy and soft. And that's when I know, like the, the rest of the leaves down here might be nice and firm on the, on the ends, but you'll start to see where the moisture leaves the plant first, which is in these leaves up here. So that's when I will water a plant. I don't wait for the rest of the plant to become soft and pliable, the leaves, because by that time, the plant is too thirsty. So that's a tip for that plant or other succulents that you might have um, that are similar to the ruby necklace. So next I have two ficus varieties. This one here is my ficus ru uh, burgundy. This is my ruby ficus. So funny story, I had this plant, um, oh, probably it was one of my first plants I think I had here in this house. I moved to this house in 2018. So I had it, it might have been early 2019, maybe, could have even been the last part of 2018. Anyway, I nearly killed it. It was upstairs in my bedroom, which gets east light. Um, not strong light at all. So I mostly need medium to low light plants up in that bedroom, I have learned. But anyway, so this plant requires high light, bright and direct light. It can even take a couple of hours of um, direct afternoon light. So this is why it sits here in this corner. Um, Cause this is the south facing window. These are east. So in the corner, it's not gonna get too scorched. So anyway, I, it was ne it nearly, it was nearly gone. I overwatered it for the amount of light that it was getting. And yeah, it was like a, t a fraction of the size that it is now. So I've only put this plant here last growing season. And it went from about here to all of this growth in one season. So I can't wait to see how much this plant grows this year. It grows mad in this situation. It requires already a lot of water uh, for so early in the season. So I'm pretty excited. This plant is my ruby ficus. So it's in the same, it's the same family, just a different variation. It's dusty, I need to clean it. Um, so I love ficus. And my dream is to have a gigantic ficus going all the way up in that corner. If you notice, I have so many plants here. I'm trying to achieve that look of a very full corner. I don't have a very mature plant to make that look. So I build it with small plants to medium sized plants on various stands. So it does kind of give off that vibe where you have a big plant, but not. So um, I'm waiting for these guys to grow. <laughs> That's why I have them there to make them grow very tall, hopefully pretty soon. I have a little bit of patience, so let's see. But anyway, this is the ruby ficus. So if you notice, I don't know if the camera can pick it up or if I'm shooting it right, but it has beautiful pink. Look at that variegation on the leaves. Um, when it gets enough sunlight, of course, because when you have variegated plants, you want to put them in the sun or as much bright exposure as that they can withstand to make that variegation pop. That's what that's what will help produce the highest variegation for your variegated plants. 
And so I just recently moved this plant here. It was over here, which is another space that I'll get to in a second. It was like down there by the lamp. So, and it just wasn't growing very well. I think another issue that I'm having with this plant for its kind of slow growth is this terracotta pot. I'm gonna take it out of terracotta and put it in plastic. I don't know, I have better luck myself with most of my plants, not all, in terracotta. I mean, plastic, sorry. <laughs> so, um, terracotta will dry out your plants quicker. I tend to be a little on the side of underwaterer, and that could be the issue, so we'll see. And uh, yeah, but you know, your cactus and your succulents, they, they like um, terracotta, especially cactus. So anyway, let's see about those guys. They So the more sunlight they get, the more water they will need. Um, and they can be heavy drinkers when they're getting good light. Like this dude is a heavy drinker. Like, what a lush. Anyway, he, yeah, drinks a lot of water. So here, next up is my, I don't know if you can see it, well, I can take you up. You're heavy, woo. So this is my Hoya Retusa. Maybe I'll sit it right here because I don't want it to fall. The pot is very heavy. I have a beautiful pot at Winters. Um, Avalon Mall location. There's none there now though. But anyway, so this is my Hoya Retusa and a little, air plant. I frequently put little air plants in my pots as kind of like decor and like a little, little buddy. I don't know. I think it looks really sweet. So anyway, um, yeah, this is a Hoya Retusa. Kind of like not everybody's cup of tea, but for me, I love interesting looking plants, just a little bit outside the box. I don't like to have, you know, everything too plain Jane. I like to have a a few statement kind of looking plants. And this is an uncommon Hoya. I got it at Gay's Seeds downtown. I get a lot of my plants from there and other local uh, places like Holland Nursery, um, yeah, Faith Greenhouses. Um, so yeah, anyway, I was thrilled when I saw them. They had two, I was like on the phone, can I please have one? And I'm glad I did because I just love it. Um, I haven't had any blooms on this plant yet, but you know, I think that it's in a great place to get those blooms if it's going to get a bloom. This Hoya likes water. Um, Hoyas are very finicky with water. If you have a Hoya, um, you will know that it takes time to get to know your Hoya, especially where you have it placed. Uh, their watering needs will vary. This guy is in the bright light. He gets east and south and a bit of west as well as the sun sets over there on this side of the house. And so it it can take a bit of water. Now I stick my finger down in the plant, in the soil, and if the soil is dry, you know, past my knuckle, uh, my first knuckle, then I will water. Um, or if the plant looks a little bit withery, it's just signs that the plant needs some water because these little leaves are sort of succulent E. They hold water. So you don't want to overwater. Anyway, I, oh, it's heavy. Maybe I'll just hold the, the pot with my other hand. And I'll put it back here. There we go. And now it's back in its home. Happy. So the next plant I'm gonna show you, oh, I'm gonna fall over, <laughs> is this Clivia. This is a beautiful plant. It's blooming for the very first time for me. This is just sort of a big deal because clivia are known to take a long time to produce blooms for the first time. This is a uh, slip my aunt gave me um, and she gave it to me, I would say in 2019 as well. And I've kept it around different places in the home. It hasn't done much for me at all as it hasn't flowered, but like this is the first time. Um, I really don't know what it is that I did to get this plant to flower, but it's probably just never gonna move from that space because look at those, look at those blooms. Like you can't see how glorious they are. Just beautiful. So uh, yeah, this plant, I pretty basic care. I just, um, 
water when dry. Like, you know, I stick my finger down in the soil. I, that's my test of all my plants. Finger in the soil. Best tool you have is this guy. So, when it's dry past my first knuckle, I will water. Um, yeah, it's not a, a big drinker, it, but you know, it's blooming right now. So what I might do the next time I water it is give uh, a weak uh, solution of fertilizer, liquid fertilizer, probably half strength to continue to help those blooms grow. I haven't given any of my plants fertilizer yet. And they are all, I think, in need almost um, because there's, I've had a lot of growth on my plants so far this growing season, which is wild because like I said, it's March. So moving on is my ficus audrey yes i have another ficus and in fact i have another one upstairs which won't be in this video i'll take you up there sometime but here is my ficus audrey and i just love this plant you really can't appreciate its beauty it's a simple kind of beauty very classic clean lines um it's kind of velvety or fuzzy i would say um you know velvety i guess you could also say on the leaves they're beautiful um I moved it down here from the bathroom just a couple of months ago because it wasn't doing much in my bathroom, which was strange because it's quite humid up there and it's just an oasis for plants. But I think this plant needed more light. So I brought it down and it has grown since, but I just can't get that little bud to open up on the top. So, you know, maybe a little bit of fertilizer soon will help. So care for this ficus is a lot like the other. So I won't go over that. Now, this plant here is my Dracaena marginata. Um, that's the variety. If you look, you can see the wine burgundy uh, coloring on the outskirts of the leaves. So that's why it's the marginata. This plant is, it loves, it's very happy here. I moved it as well from upstairs. Um, it's been upstairs in a couple of my bed, a couple of the rooms up there, but this is where it's the happiest. It gets bright in direct light in that corner, more Eastern light than, than South. So as it's closer to that Eastern window, but it really likes it there. I am having a bit of a crisis with it in terms of like, I am not a fan of that terracotta pot. I don't know, it's just too much terracotta for me. It's not very balanced in my look. So I'm going to hopefully soon um, try to find a wicker basket to put it in. Uh, as I have a wicker basket over in, can't see it, I'll get over there. But I have a wicker basket uh, for one of my plants over there. So it will be a nice balance, a nice touch. So I'm gonna put a basket there and I have a different stool because the basket will not fit there in that little uh, stand. So I will um, change the stand and put a basket there. And that's my hope very soon to do that because I am like really into the decor part, not just the plants. And I just love to create a mood, a moment, if you will, with plants. So anyway, this plant likes, I, it just, it will tell you it's very communicative plant. Most plants are, if you slow down and take the time to really observe your plants, your plants will talk to you and tell you when they need water or fertilizer and the like. So this plant will droop. It's actually not, that droopy right now <laughs> it might look like it but it's actually not i watered it like i think yesterday it was pretty droopy then so anyway i let it droop for me and then i water it usually when it's it's um drooping yeah it just needs a bit of, a bit of water this plant here is my oh. oh can't do it very well here um this is a oh i love this plant it's my Lemon lime philodendron. Ah, uh, what a plant. So this plant came from a plant friend of mine. Um, she traded this, like all of these cuttings for a bunch of my cuttings of my um, philodendron Brazil plant. Cause I have a big mama plant up in my room. It, it's still huge and I've cut it up so much this year already. So anyway, we went straight trade and I got this beautiful plant and it cost me nothing. And that's why I love local trade groups. Oh my God. And there's people in those groups that are the kindest people. They give you slips, trade. Um, of course, people sell their plants too and, and slips of their plant. Anyway, just I'm stunned. I'm shook. 
hashtag dead on this plant. Um, I've got it here. I normally don't have plants here, but I added a stand because I have this plant here, which is just um, a bunch of plugs put in this pot. So it's going to require a lot of light and water to get the growth going. And it's already happening because you can see I have baby growths over here. So it's taking off the plant looks like it's a bit firm and taut. And so the leaves are no longer droopy, which means they have taken the roots are, are going through the soil and getting established. So this plant will be here for just a, a probably another month or two. I don't know, I might keep it there, but I have plans for you. You are gonna go in my bedroom, I think. Who knows? I have plans and then I change them. And so down here is the other plant I have, just in a basic planter. Um, and so this is, oh, I cannot get very good. Sorry. Here, I'll just do this and I hope you can see it. Oh, look at the wee little growth in there. Oh, cute. So this is the queen of the night plant. I'm just going to do this because I don't even know what you're looking at. So this is my queen of the night plant. Disregard the sticker on the roar pot. So, um, it's in this beautiful space here. That's prime real estate. I'm telling you. But it's getting that location because it needs to root again, right? So these are all cuttings uh, from somebody on the local uh, plant swap groups that I know. Lovely lady. And yeah, so we did a trade. I bought some and then she gave me some and we did a trade, I think, on top of it. And yeah, so I really am in love with epithetic plants which basically are plants that are um, in, the, in the succulent family, but they're a particular kind of family. Um, so you're looking at plants like your Christmas cactus, your Thanksgiving, your holiday cactuses, your orchid cactus, um, and then of course the queen of the night. Um, I can't say the scientific name, but that's also in that family. They can also grow on trees. They are gorgeous, so I just love them. And I hope this one grows big and tall. So yeah, needs a lot of strong light and a lot of water. These, when you propagate a plant in water and you let the roots grow in the water as opposed to the soil, you need to give it a lot of water in the first month or so when it's in its new pot because of that adjustment that it's making from being living in water. Here goes a bike. Just gonna wait for it. <laughs> Yeah, it's making that adjustment, so you have to provide a lot of moisture, a lot of water for that plant. After it's taken root, I probably won't water the plant as much as I water it now. Okay, so moving along, these are just propagations. I don't know if you can see them. I'm just gonna... No, you can't see them. That's okay. <laughs> I won't show that. If you can't see it, it's just fine, whatever. So this plant here right here is this plant is a frustrating but beautiful plant it's a hoya just like that hoya retusa it's in the same family oh my goodness but this plant is it's i've had this plant since last may june it hasn't grown not one peck it hasn't shown, shown one sign of growth true it could be also partly because it's in terracotta. It had a huge root system. I couldn't fit it in a smaller terracotta pot. It's in a six inch pot. This is a this was like a cutting, right? That I got from the Feathered Serpent, which is a awesome um, small business in Toronto. It has very cool, uh, uncommon to rare plants that you can't get here in Newfoundland yet. So you know, um, I bought a nice few plants off them. They ship really well. They're awesome business people, really nice, kind people. But anyway, <clears throat> so this is not a reflection of them. This plant is just known to be a very slow grower, which in a way I don't mind because I have so many plants when they grow, I have to do something different with them. I have to propagate them. I have to cut them up or I have to move them. And so it's kind of nice to have just like a plant, like a sculpture that just doesn't do anything. <laughs> but, um, so, I moved it here, um, I don't know where I had it. Oh, I had it over by my piano, I'll get there. But I'm kind of glad that 
I just thought of that today because if it's gonna grow, it's gonna grow in this window. This amazing light, right? So that's Eastern light. It also is gonna get, you know, the South and the West facing, like it's got a ton of light. It's the best scene in the house. It's a beautiful sculptural piece and it just suits this vase so well. Um, very tricky with water. Please do not water them much. I water that guy maybe once a month and and not even much at that. So I don't know. I think that it's gonna take a long time for this plant for its roots to get established in such a big pot. And then maybe it will push up some growth. But I've heard people say that they've had theirs for two years and that's when it starts to grow. So not holding my breath, but I'm happy that it looks so beautiful right there. And I can really appreciate its beauty um, in this place. So I'm glad I did it. So here are a little bit, a little few propagations. I am big into plant art. Um, some of you might know that I made Kokodama. Um, and so I am super obsessed with Kokodama and succulents. They actually work really well together. So I'm gonna be making some Kokodama out of some of these. And except for that mother of thousands, which I'm going to remove from that pot one day and put on its own, it's so cute. So I've never had one of those plants before, so it's new to me. I won't talk too much about its care, but yeah, so I have, actually, I, I'm not the greatest with succulent care. I guess that's a lie, certain succulents. Um, not that I'm not the greatest, I just am new to it. So I won't talk too much about the care, but you know, succulents, to the best of my knowledge, water when dry. When the leaves are communicating to you, they're withery, and they're saying they're thirsty or like they get the crinkly, wrinkly, a little bit like puckered up. Water them then and don't water them a lot. So they're really cute. I got a bunch of those off the, the houseplant auction group that we have here in Newfoundland and this in this location on the Avalon and on some of the plant groups and also in trades. I have one friend who's like the succulent queen and she gave me an awesome propagation box. This mama, this mama gemma queen, that is my monster disillu disillu blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I'm so excited I can't even say the name. Monstera deliciosa, just a green version. And I just I have to say, like, just a green version? Hold up. This, like, I know everybody wants a variegated monstera, but I'm so satisfied with this plant. Not just because of how beautiful it grows, but I just really love a solid, nice green plant. I just really love green plants. I do like pops of variegation in color, but I'm a, I'm a plain Jane girl like that. I like plain green plants. So anyway, got this dude et from Gaze Seeds in the spring of, get this, 2020. 20. Yeah, and I got it in a 10 inch. Right now it's in a 12 inch. And it was not that big in its 10 inch pot when I got it. I had it there for a while. It blew up last year for in growth. I fertilized it. You need to fertilize your plants. Don't be afraid of it. Um, you can ask me any questions on that if you like, but I fertilized it every other watering at half strength in the growing season last summer. And it just really appreciated that. Um, I have lots of fenestrations, you know, not every leaf comes out fenestrated, fine, that's okay. Um, but it's just so awesome. I love this plant, super statement piece, love it. It looks great. I have to rotate it quite a bit because it gets, you know, it sways back and forth with the light. Um, yeah, so it's pretty. And I have a pole in there. Here it is. It's from Vesture and Vines, it's Canadian. Uh, small based company, I think on the mainland somewhere, maybe Ontario. Uh, Gay Seed in St. John's sells them. They did, so I bought it in there. You can make your own pole, but I was like a bit intimidated by making my own moss pole. I still haven't done that, but I'm going to try it sometime. So, anyway, it is such a hardy plant. I recommend it even for beginners. Honestly, you can have a super like cool plant and a big growing plant. Um, when you're a beginner and it's the Monstera Deliciosa. It likes bright and direct light. You know, it doesn't want to be getting direct light, AKA sun rays falling on it. That's direct light because it will burn the leaves. So 
you know, but it can tolerate medium light as well. It might not grow as much um, as it would in bright indirect light, but it's such a good plant. Water when dry, that's it. It's not high maintenance. It's not a diva. It won't stress you out, right? Like it's a grower and a shower and just beautiful. You need one. You need one. So this right here is my beautiful aloe vera. I am in love with her. Oh, don't poke me. Anyway, just gorgeous. I think I had this one at Holland Nursery in town. Like it was just a pup, not very big. And I got it, I think was sometime in 2020. I bought a lot of plants in 2020. Um, anyway, it's got a pup, but I'm giving it to my aunt. So no dibs, anybody. <laughs> and uh, a different aunt, not the same aunt that gave me the clivia. I have something else for her, but growing, trying to grow it. So anyway, um, aloes, they will burn. Hey, I, I found that out last year. News flash for me. I had it over in that south facing window with the uh, crown thorns and that. And it burnt. I didn't know what a burnt aloe looked like, but it's just kind of bronzy. Um, it's not like a Hoya. Hoyas get sun stress. It's pretty. It's nice. It's okay for a Hoya, but not okay for an aloe. My plant was dying. I took it out of that location and put it here in the bright indirect light. And it is like just living its best life. Um, I'm soon going to need to repot it. Now, Aloe loves to be root bound. It loves a shallow pot, a shallow wide pot. So this, this pot is not wide per se, but it's shallow for that, for that plant right now, because it has pretty big root system, I would imagine at this point. So sometime this summer, I think I'm going to find a shallow wider pot for it and just stick it in there because it's kind of toppling and I don't want to lose my plant. Anyway, water when dry. This plant is a succulent, holds a lot of moisture in those leaves. Those are thick leaves, so it holds a lot of moisture. I water that plant probably once every two weeks. Um, we'll see how it goes over the summer because it's going to need and require more water. But right now I do once every two weeks for that plant. Maybe I'll do another tour at some point in the summer and update everybody on the plant care of these plants. So. Right here, this is my beautiful Syngonium. Um, it's the white butterfly version, super popular, common plant. Got this at Holland's. Um, it, I love this plant, so Volomia. I can't say the word. It has a lot of volume. Okay, it will come to me after I finish this video and I'll be like annoyed, but anyway. This is a beautiful plant, super low maintenance. You need to keep this plant in medium, I almost fell over, medium, low to medium light. It thrives. It doesn't thrive in high light. So, because I've had this plant in a couple of places in my home, and this is its, like, most favorite place. I have it in a big wicker basket. It's, you know, this plant's actually bigger than what you think. Like, here's me with the plant. Hi. I'm in the jungle, baby. Whoa. Do you know where you are? Ah. Anyway. You're so cute. So, yeah, and it just loves it back here. It definitely gets medium light. Um, it's the partial shade for a place of my home, really. So, you know, a fern would be good down here too, but gotta be careful with ferns because they like humidity. There's only certain times in the year where this place gets really humid. So um, you could always put a humidifier there, but whatever, I just, just, this is just a place for me to put this plant, so. Um, I've got my ferns up in my bathroom. Anyway, just love it. I've got poles there, bamboo poles. It's not a very good staking job. I didn't know what I was doing. Um, but, you know, it's working. Um, so I just want that plant to grow vertically, and it is. So, I, you know, at some point I might take those poles out and make a tripod one. So join those three together like a little teepee, kind of. And maybe put some moss, sphagnum moss around it. And let it grow up that way. I think it might actually be a bit more successful. So this plant for watering, you water when dry, stick your finger in. And if, you know, you don't want this one to dry completely out. Um, and so, you know, you stick your finger in, it's mostly dry, partially dry, I say, then water that one. Same thing with the Monstera Deliciosa. 
partially dry. You stick your finger in and I have to water this thing almost like every three or four days. It's gonna be a job this summer, but yeah, it, it's a bit more moist right now. It's consistently moist. I wanna let it go a little bit longer and then I will water that one. This, she is my queen. Oh, well, she is kind of a queen by name as well. This is the Hoya Crimson Queen. I, this is like probably my most stunning plant. My pride and joy. I don't know, it's kind of hard to say that. It's like picking favorite plants very really hard. So, um, but I got this one at Gay Seed. They bring in big, ho big Hoya. Finding a big Hoya is hard. So you're going to invest though. They're not cheap, but I have two larger Hoya and I don't regret it. Not one bit. I love it. I, you know, made it happen. So this has um, lots of variegation. I just moved it over here. It was by the Monstera there in front. I did move it. I just want a bit more of a streamlined look. I had a tripod stand here with other plants, including that, that carry eye, but I, I wanted it gone. It was just too much for me at that point. I have so many plants over here trying to like reduce the the noise level on the plants numbers so i'm going to try her here she's going to get really good light um shining from the east and south um we'll see we'll see but this is might be a temporary home i don't i don't know but anyway so water when dry with hoya you will notice like this with actual leaves like traditional kind of looking leaves they're firm when they're nice and hydrated when they start to get soft, you've either overwatered or underwatered. If the plant pot is heavy, you've overwatered. If the plant pot is light, it needs water. So a queen, I have a princess, she's upstairs, but the queen's variation is on the outside of the leaves like this. The crimson princess has variation on the inside of the leaves only, and her stems are pink. So Beautiful pink variegation as the plant gets a new leaf. Lots of my pink variegation is fading right now because the leaves are maturing. That's what happens. Um, they will fade to white. An all white leaf like this is very stunning, but don't expect your plant to produce all leaves like this. And if it did, that's not a good thing because there is no green in a leaf like this. Therefore, there's no chlorophyll, there's no food. The plant, the leaf will die, which is fine when it's just a few. But if you get a full st like stem producing all white leaves, that's an issue. You might have to, to cut. But as long as there's some green on your plant, you're fine. There's some clover in here. I think it's sweet. Hello. Anyway, she's gorgeous. I love her. Like, oh. My child's ball. Um, beautiful. Now, it's getting to be a long video, but you know what? I've been waiting to do this. So, and I have a lot of plants down here. And yeah, so this looks a bit bare because I need to go down and just get my art piece. I had a winter wreath up there and I just took it down. So, don't mind that. I have some really nice art and I'm going to put it up there um, soon. So this is another Hoya, my first Hoya. So this is a Hoya, I think it's a Pubacalyx. Sometimes I don't know. Sometimes I think it's a Carnosa, but um, actually it is, I think, a Carnosa splash. So see these little marks when I first got this plant and I saw those things, I thought I had pests. I didn't know, <laughs> but the most there's more very there's more splashes on on this side of the plant because it gets more light right it gets that east light coming through and it's doing really good it's growing like a weed this is an older plant for this home for me um i've been keeping plants for years but i had to start over when i moved back to newfoundland so this plant is probably going on three years old and I got it. I didn't know a thing about Hoya. I didn't know it was a thing. I thought it was a kind of an expensive small plant. It was like $17, 18 19 something like that at, at home. And I was like, oh, well, well, it looks really cool. I don't have anything like it. Little did I know, it was like a pretty highly sought after plant to be. So I love it. I love it. It's pretty plain and it's a good grower and it's no fuss. It really enjoys this ceramic pot which Hoya I've found 
don't prefer terracotta, at least the ones that I keep, just the way that I care for them, um, terracotta is not a good choice for me. So it does like this glazed ceramic. They do like plastic as well. So I water when, when dry, like all my Hoya. I let them go a little bit on the drier side. Um, yeah, pretty dried out, not partially. If there's any moisture at all, I do not water. This is an aloe one of my aunts gave me. Yeah, I got some cool ants. I do, they give me lots of stuff and I give them lots of stuff too. But this is an aloe that my aunt gave me. I love it, it's grown a lot. It's grown a pup since I've had it. And I will probably never get rid of it because I just love it so much. Just like my other plant that my aunt gave me. Um, and over here um, is, oh, well aloe. I went over aloe care, right? So I water that one every two weeks, sometimes even three weeks. Um, and I have specific fertilizer for aloe, cactus, succulents, and stuff like that. This is my Cebu Blue. My decor is a little scant. I'm in the middle of like planning a reassemble, like a different setup here, but it'll look different. So Cebu Blue, super uncommon plant right now. Very hard to get your hands on. I had this one at Grassroots. NL. It's a new plant startup here in Newfoundland. It's in Torbay, um, just outside St. John's. So anyway, it's a pothos. Cebu Blue is a very uh, variety of pothos. Easy care, super easy care, fast grower, uh, likes medium to bright and direct light, doesn't enjoy direct sun. Um, it's grown a lot for me since I've gotten it. Um, I think a lot of it's because it's here on my piano, which gets, you know, bright and direct, um, but even a little bit more to the medium um, because it's, you know, it's across the room from the windows, right? So that's a good 18, 20 feet. So it enjoys that light setup and I love it. I water like most pothos. I water when mostly dry. So, almost done, you guys. Oh, I lost, I lost my coffee. Mm. Love a coffee. Okay. Oh, I almost forgot. This guy. That's a Hoya Hindu rope. Slow grower, don't care, because I really enjoy the sculptural look that this gives it's a small plant it's not heavy on the eyes when you look in at my room right it's not it's not heavy on the eyes i like a little teeny plant hanging right here it's not gonna grow fast um it doesn't grow fast anyway and um yeah i this plant is not a heavy waterer either water when a bit crinkly at the top the crown of the plant and so it's probably once every two weeks but it does like bright and direct like the best, but you can't do it all the time. I think my parents are here, so I may have to take another break. <laughs> I'll just do another one while I'm waiting for them to come in. So this is another Hoya. This is the funniest situation I've got going on. Look at that. Those tendrils are like the shoots of new growth. So new leaves will appear on those uh, long stems. This plant grows insane. It's my Hoya Australis. I do have a Hoya Australis Lisa in the back of that table, which I will show as well. Um, but anyway, um, it's super cute. It's sun stressed right now. See the bronzy look? It's sun stressed. That's okay for this plant. That's not damaging this plant. It enjoys being sun stressed and it's growing like a weed. So there's nothing wrong with that. So my mom is looking in the window at me and wondering what I'm doing. <laughs> I'll talk to you in a minute. Okay, so my parents just left. <laughs> and uh, I had a lovely visit. And uh, anyhow, so I'm just going to finish this up really quick because this video is pretty long. And some people like long videos. I personally like long videos, especially plant tours. I just really love that. But maybe not everybody likes that. So my children are awake and they are in the playroom. They may come out. But we'll try to do this quick. So that was my Hoya Australis um, here. Very long. Gonna get a trellis. You never clip these though. 
because these are the new shoots. So leaves will appear on this. And if you're going to get flowers on your Hoya, that's where they'll also come from. Um, general Hoya care with this one. It, I find it a bit more thirsty than most Hoyas. This one here is also um, a Hoya Australis, but it's Lisa. So this one is variegated, as you can see. And look at the sweet little new growth there. Very cute. Very slow grower. I'm just kind of figuring this one out. I've had it since like the fall and this is all it's grown. There's two new leaves. So I, I'm no pro at this one. <laughs> Some people find that they like more water. I think that's the case for this one. Like I guess the other uh, Hoya Australis. This is a Hoya. I'll take it up to make it easier and quicker. This one, I love this one. It's a curtsy eye. Not a very common Hoya around these parts. Got a little planty friend, little air plant friend. So I just love it. I don't know if you can see, but it's got like kind of splash variegation. Um, it's growing really well, really quickly in this super hot southern facing window. Um, general Hoya care. Be careful, you can overwater this plant though, so you don't want to do that. So again, water when dry. You want the soil to be quite dry, but like lots of new growth. I love the leaves, they're very textu uh, textural, so like they're hard, they're cool to feel, very nice. This is another Coco Dama that I have. I made this one. I don't know how to say the name of this succulent. A lot of people out there do, so <laughs> sorry I can't say the name. But anyway. Um, this one needs to be watered too because it's very light. I put this in a bowl of water uh, for about 10 minutes and it's good to go. And it's actually grown so well. Like this plant has grown so much since I've had it in Kokodama. I just have to share that. So um, I do make Kokodamas. People who are local can pick them up uh, for me if you like. Um, I try to price them at, at, at good prices. Um, Coconuts can be pretty expensive, but I kind of keep mine in the $20 range. This is a chain of hearts that I'm growing. I'm not going to keep this plant. This is going to be sold. I just keep it there because it's got really great heat and light. And before I forget, this is my... Uh, Euphorbia. I forget the proper name, but it's a red African milk tree. I love it. I got it from Faith Greenhouses. Um, you can't really appreciate the beauty of this plant from this video, but like it is stunning. I just love it. Of course, it's Euphorbia, so you've got to watch if you have plants and kids and pets that are a bit you know, into messing with plants. Again, mine are not, so I'm lucky. And um, yeah, it like, of course it's a cactus. It's gonna like the bright indirect light or direct light. Right here is a beautiful corner. I just love it there. The sun hits that plant and it lights it up and you really see the red, so pretty, I love it. So I don't know if I'm gonna show you any more. This is only like one half of this room down here. The last plant that I have to show you is this uh, air plant. And I think my son is coming out. <laughs> but anyway, this air plant, I just don't know the name of it right now. Um, but I just put it in water for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, once a week, and always dry your air plants like this upside down so the water won't rot in the crown. So that's it, it's beautiful, it's a nice little uh, low profile piece of decor. I don't want, my furniture is quite low profile to begin with, low to the ground. So you don't want stuff like um, tall on your coffee table. Plus I have my kids and that's not gonna work. So anyway, um, yeah, I just like, I made that up. I made that little situ situation up myself. It's got stones. I've got, I got this at a Michael's on sale and underneath it is a shell piece that I got on my honeymoon in, I think I got that one 
at Easter Island. Oh, dream vacation. Most luxurious thing I've ever done in my entire life. Probably won't get to do it again for many years. <laughs> but anyway, my baby's crying. I have to go. So thank you for everybody who watched this video. I hope I'll just do a little, little spin around here. I hope you enjoyed looking at my plants and learning about them. And if you haven't subscribed to my video, oh, see, I'll do those later. But if you haven't subscribed to my channel, my YouTube channel, please do. Um, give it a like, give it a follow or a subscription. Please share and I will see you in my next video. Okay, bye.